with Mike Wengren from Disturbed on WDHA's Reconnect with Rockers. I have been dying to reconnect with you for such a long time. You know why? Why? Because when your name comes up, there are two things that always follow your name. My name or the band's name? Your name. Oh, no. Uh Uh-oh. I didn't do it, I swear. Hear me out. Um, (laughs) The best drummer in current bass rock. Whoa. And and one of the nicest guys in music. Now, there's always people who have that great reputation of being nice guys. Rob Halford, Michael Anthony, um, uh, Joe Satriani. But anytime Disturb comes up and your name comes up, everybody always talks about what a humble, amazing, incredible dude you are. So I just wanted to bring that up to you because I've been in radio a long time, but your name is always synonymous with that. Lies, all lies. <laughs> 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 no, you definitely don't have the a-hole factor. So everybody loves Mike. So I wanted to bring that up. So I'm really happy to have you on. And uh, yeah, you seemed like a super cool guy as soon as you zoomed in. And of course, we have a new record. I want to talk about drums. I want to talk about drumming. And I want to talk about you being what I view as an experienced drummer. You're not oh, wow. just the okay. guy that, you know, is behind the band, keeping the beat, most important part of the band. You're the guy that people can't take their eyes off of when they're out of the show. (laughs) Seriously, Uh, when I go to a Disturbed show, I'm not just focused on David and all the things that sometimes you get focused on at a regular rock show. I want to see what you are doing because there's that dynamic, that dynamicness about everything that you bring to performance. So talk to me about who was your experienced drummer? Not the person that you thought was necessarily the best, but the person that you looked at and said, damn, that's who I want to be. Well, when I was starting out, I mean, I'm a drummer for a long time now. So yeah, hence there's some experience there. But the guy for me back in the day was like in the 80s was Tommy, Tommy Lee, you know, Motley Crue. I mean, he wasn't just like one of the best drummers out there he was also a, an amazing showman as well you know and i'm not i'm not talking about all the added theatrics as well as you know the drum sets twirling around and and whatnot i'm just talking about like he just he just uh, uh oozed attitude and um and just i, I don't know like i can't explain it he just i just wanted to be i wanted to be Tommy lee back then you know um so I would watch him and I would watch how he played. Um, and I just, I just gravitated to that. Um, tried to kind of grab some bits and pieces and I just tried to emulate him. But then, you know, as I learned and, and, and started to grow, I, I kind of developed my own style and little, took little pieces from here and there. And when I started to get even into uh, even heavier music, Vinnie Paul from Pantera was, was the guy for me, um, you know, rest in peace, Vin. Uh, but yeah, that's those, those, those two guys are probably my, my biggest influences. Yeah, I can, I can see it. I can definitely see it. And yeah, Tommy, there wasn't anything, every time he hit, he emoted. It was like, you could always see emotions every time he hits in every video. I'm thinking of like even the home sweet home video now too. And just like his face in that video, that's sort of ingrained in your brain, you know, when you think Absolutely. back to that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the record. Let's talk about 10 tracks that are disturbed 2.0.9.5. like 50. And it's like, it's such a, is it a conceptual record? Because I took the journey on it. I was lucky enough, you know, it comes out on the 18th, but I was lucky enough to get to hear it um, from Hey You to Bad Man to Love to Hate to, it seems almost conceptual in nature as we take this ride with you guys. And there's a story there. We didn't necessarily set out to do that, like to create, say, a a concept record. I think a lot of the songs tie together and there's definitely a flow, um, but that just happened to be what came out of us. I mean, just like everybody else in the world, you know, you took these guys that have been uh, doing this for a very long time that grew this band from nothing and you locked us up for two years and said we couldn't do it anymore. And we got pissed off and, uh, we, we, you know, just like everybody we're frustrated, we're pent up and we were sick of it. So when, uh, um, everything finally started to open back up, see, okay. Well, the way we write songs is we do it in person. 
I mean, sure, you can share files back and forth and you can do Zoom stuff like this. But for us, it's we're old school and it's really about the energy, like reading each other's reactions in person and really feeling that vibe. So, you know, we 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 um we really couldn't do much because of the restrictions that were upon everybody. So when things started to open back up a little bit, we went and flew to go see each other. We met at a couple different places. We started messing around with some ideas. And once the door was open, the floodgates were unleashed. Uh, Danny especially was on fire with his riffs. Wow. Um, it I, I don't know. It just, everything was so natural. It was really exciting for us to be in rooms together. And uh, like I just said, it just, it just kind of, it just was very organic and, um, and it just came came pouring out of us. Yeah, you can hear it. I can hear it on this record. I can hear and I can hear you. I mean, from the first, you know, opening of Hey You. I mean, this is this is a this is a you record. I mean, you are just so front and center on on every track here. I think my favorite track right now, because I, I got lucky and I got a little advanced copy and I got to listen, it is probably won't back down. There's just something in that song that is just nice. I just love, love, love that over and over and over and over and over um all weekend long. So was Louder Than Life actually the first time that you was that the first show you played out of out of lockdown? Um because it was like a me. big ginormo dome kind of show. It wasn't like a smaller show. I remember you guys, it was like a big festival, I think. I think you're right with that. I'm trying to remember which one it was. I mean, we did a handful of, of festivals this year, Louder Than Life, definitely. But uh, yeah. Um, what was that like to get uh, back on stage together for the first time in how many years? I mean, what what did that feel like? Well, you know, we, we actually did a couple of shows at the end of last year when there were still a bit of lockdown things happening. Like um, for us, they were imposing like bubbles each camp still had to like do yourself restricting your own bubble. Um, and even though like we were still happy to be able to perform and go out there on stage, it was very frustrating to do yeah. a festival yeah. for us. Like we, part of the the joy of doing a festival isn't just the performance. It's going and hanging out with all of our bros and all the other bands, getting to watch other bands perform, um, crew members. I mean, like, you know, again, going back to being uh, experienced, like you said, doing this for a while, it's always like a, a summer camp or band camp, getting to go see all of our buddies again. And uh, having that part still locked on was very frustrating, but uh, we were also very appreciative at the same time um, that we could even just play to begin with. So, you know, didn't want to necessarily bitch about it, but uh, you know, this year things are, are definitely definitely more back to normal where we could interact with our buddies and other musicians backstage and see everyone. So, um, so it's been great. It's been awesome. Now with divisive coming out uh, pretty soon, can't wait to get out there and do like a proper tour. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are doing that. Um, 2023 is going to be a really, really busy year for you guys um, getting out and, and doing the shows. Um, so talk to me, this was, done in uh, nashville correct first yeah, we first time in... recording in nashville yes yeah wow. i mean honestly like in nashville um it it, it kind of just became a place of convenience and being comfortable we all live in different cities now um our producer drew he's actually based in la um so it wasn't as logistically easy for us to you know the the flight times you know you you basically lose a day going back and forth from the Midwest to the West Coast. So um, it just was more effective to choose someplace closer to the Midwest. And Nashville just happens to have a plethora of, you know, studios. Yeah, uh, Nashville so is Drew, like the hub now of everything. Yeah. Everybody's recording in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a great city. Um, we didn't get to experience a, a ton of the, the nightlife. I mean, we pretty much just went there to, to work. Um David actually was in process of moving to uh, Florida at the time. So to go from, you know, Chicago, Milwaukee, Florida, everything was about a lot closer to going to Nashville. So um, it, it just it just really worked out. We found a, a, a great studio that was very comfortable for us. Uh, Drew flew his gear out and we just had a great time. Yeah. Um, and there's always the, you know, the one track that um, is kind of the surprise track. 
you know, and that's, I think on this one is the, uh, the Ann Wilson duet, which is yeah, so cool. That's... I mean, come on, it's Ann Wilson and her voice and David's voice together um, Absolutely. are just so beautiful. And, and, and it wasn't what I expected it to be um, because it was almost like his voice kind of melded to her voice on, uh, on don't tell me. So how did that come? How did that come to be? Well, uh, that was always supposed to be like, you know, the power ballad per se. And as we were uh, tracking it in the studio, David just threw out the idea, hey, let's do a duet on this song. Um, it, we've we've tossed around the idea before, but there wasn't ever either the right material or the right time. So in this particular case, you know, we kind of said, well, wh wh who do you got in mind? And he didn't even have a list. He just had one person and that was Anne. It was a no brainer. Hey, let's hit up Anne. Let's see if she'd be into it. Wow. And she was on board right away. We didn't have to convince her. Um, the two of them sort of struck up a bit of a friendship, a little bit of a rapport when Sound of Silence actually came on, uh, came out years back and, and had a success. She was one of many artists and celebrities that took it upon themselves to go on Twitter and praise the song and praise our version of it, which we couldn't have been more honored. Like you said, you know, iconic legendary Ann Wilson thinks that we did a great job with the Simon of Garfunkel cover. That's, that's pretty, pretty incredible, pretty, a pretty great honor. So uh, when we reached out to her, she was more than willing to, to jump on board and she came in and she killed it. Well, she's still only... such an artist, you know, she's oh, still right. such an artist. Everything she does is um, with integrity and uh, authenticity. You know, she's never lost any of that over the years, you know, Anne is, is, is the real deal. She's super, super serious about what she does. So, uh, yeah, absolutely this came out amazing. Super cool, super cool and down to earth too. And just incredibly talented. I mean, we're so, it's just such an honor to have her, you know, be on, be on our record. And, uh, and like you said, to, to me, like the blending of her voice and David's voice, they really, really work so well together. I'm so proud of David and, and just so honored to to, to be a uh, to have her part of our record. Yeah, yeah. And and, and and the thing is, now that the record's coming out, we can finally like we, we've been sitting on this for months and months, and you know it, we've had to keep quiet about it. So to be able to finally let it out is like, yay! Guess what? <laughs> guess what we did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So I want to also go back to touring, and I want to go back to that night at Madison Square Garden. Was it 2019? Sold out show, Madison Square Garden. I was in the audience for that. Being in such an iconic venue and seeing that whole place be literally on fire. You guys raised the roof off of that place. I, at Three Days Grace was the opener. And I remember walking in and everybody was there even for the opener. It was such a magical night. Did you feel the magic that the people in the audience felt that night? I mean, the gardens, you know, a couple miles from me, you know, that's where I go for shows. But that night, there was something very special in in the air that night. Did you guys feel it as we felt it in the audience? Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, they're, they're really, I mean, I, yeah, it, the, the short answer is yes. But I mean, the garden is one of the, if, I mean, one of the most iconic, well-known venues worldwide to, 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 for an artist to, to play there and, 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 you know, not just like play it, but to headline your own show in there. That's that's a sign of of a certain level of making it. It was a, a not just a pinch me moment, but I mean, I remember we were in the van coming into the place, and they, you know, you kind of come in and you go down below and you walk in and you see like your 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 picture on the marquee and the yeah. band name, and we were like, oh my god, like here we are, we've arrived, and then you know we take the stage, and you're right, it was so electric. I mean, that was really one of our career high moments for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was very song remains the same, I would imagine, when you're under the garden, you know, and then you see your face very, you know, kind of in in that Zeppelin moment, in that Zeppelin-esque moment in the movie, you know, when they're driving in that old fashion-y now limousine, you know, but, right. but your moment, your moment. Yeah, Madison Square Garden is just so incredibly iconic. And uh, there are so many shows I've been to there. And that show is one of those top five shows that kind of sticks out in my head as being that night where just the audience was whoosh, 
right I, with I really you guys. Appreciate that that, that mm-hmm. was very emotional night for us. And uh, like you said, you know, there's so many artists that have played that throughout the play that place throughout the year. So to be able to join that club was it, it was pretty amazing for us. Yeah. Talk to me about putting together too these lyric videos now that everybody's doing. Um, I, you know, how much creative uh, feel do you have in putting together these? You guys have have done some of these, and you know, I oh, kind of yeah. like them. I think I think they're kind of cool. I think they can be very creative if done with the right tune and the right band. Um, yeah, so, what do you absolutely. think? You know, what what, what do you think uh, of of kind of pushing music out there that way? It's, you know, it's, it's different times these days. Uh, I mean, it's not just now, but the last several years with streaming, there's there's so many different ways now of discovering music. I mean, back when I was growing up, I'd, I'd run in a record store and, and, and look for the CD or look for the vinyl for that matter. So uh, I, I we, we completely embrace it. Uh, we have a great art department at the record label and we have a great uh, team at management you know, sometimes people will throw ideas out there of what direction they think they want to go. And uh, we always approve whatever goes out there anyway. And sometimes it's pretty exciting to see what they come up with. Um, I think it's just a great way of maybe gaining some new fans. Yeah. And uh, also yeah. at the same time, I think it also helps expose the lyrics. Um, you know, when they're right there in front of your face and you can see it going across the screen, you know, Um we're not going to get too many people uh, trying to karaoke singing the wrong words now. <laughs> and you know what? You guys are a visual band too. You guys Absolutely. are a visual band, a storytelling band. Like I said, you know, is this record record sequenced, you know, for any particular reason, the way that it is or conceptual, because there are stories that go along with the music and that is disturbed. Disturbed is a very, a very, very visual band. And of course, this is a battle cry a battle cry record. It really is. It really I love is. it. I I love it. And we can't wait to see you, of course, in the new year for the big tour. You've got, uh, we were talking about dogs, you know, mine are kind of yipping and yipping in the background here. Do you, are you a bell? You have a Belgian Malinois? I do. I do. Yes. Yep. on social. Is, she is Beautiful. nuts. She's. <laughs> They're too smart. Her. They are just too smart for their own words. Right. She really is. And she is high, high intense energy. So I'm constantly walking her. Um, uh, my the friend my friend uh, actually owns a boarding facility that I take her to, and they actually specialize in uh, the whole region where I live uh, with all the military canines and the law enforcement canines. So she gets a lot of training there. Uh, she gets to play with the pack over there. Uh, she's very well socialized. She's really really sweet, but. Oh my God, if I don't exercise her, she is nuts. <laughs> I think she's the perfect drummer dog though. Is she not? She, she is. That's my, that is totally my breed. I mean, um, I, uh, when I used to be married, we'd had like different little smaller dogs that the wife would pick out from time to time. And they were great. I love all kinds of dogs. But for me, like my breed, I like really connect with, um, you know, she's really fast. Uh, she's really smart. Uh, she's, uh, slender. Like she's, they, they call them the fur missile, you know, or, or the land sharks. Um, what I love about it is, is we, we, uh, we're really in tune with, with the military and we love doing meet and greets, um, at military bases, uh, whenever we're doing the show and someone comes up from the military, they always talk about how, how our songs, um, really touch them. Um, we've had a lot of troops that talk about when they've been overseas, um in iraq or afghanistan um when they go into battle or when they go out to do their mission they use our music to help get themselves pumped up to go out there so that really really hits home um and we we did sell several uh meet and greets um the last cycle and one of them that really stood out in my my head was we got to go to nellis air force base outside of vegas and they have a canine unit there and we got to go uh, see the demonstration with the canines and there was some Dutch shepherds, but also the Malinois as well. And I was just so mesmerized watching them perform in person. I said, one, that's one day I'm, I'm going to have one of those. Wow. So, and you got I her. I, I do. She's actually my second. On, uh, I had another one before. And unfortunately, uh, she ended up getting kidney failure. So oh. uh, she, she passed away last year. And um, my uh, one of my business partners and my friend, like I mentioned, who owns a boarding facility they went ahead and uh kind of snuck behind my back and got me my second one there so but she she's she's amazing i love it i'm a, awesome. I'm a huge dog person awesome yeah me, me too I have a rescue feature called rock and rough at the radio station and there's always somebody hanging around my house 
who knows? I, I just live here. <laughs> they, they rule the place. I just live here. I provide the food, you know. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll work for the dog's food, um, <laughs> you know, all that. Listen, I am so happy to have spent some time with you. Um, you're a super special guy in music. You know, we need more. We certainly need more people like you. And um, thanks for 20 years. I mean, you think when you think of the band, you know, in the band's history now, does it feel like, you know, does it feel like two years? Does it feel like five years? Does it feel like how what does it feel like? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know. It still feels like pinch me. Like, are you serious? I still get to wake up every day and I get to play drums and, and, and earn a living doing it like that. That's, um, I don't know. So there's some times where I feel, um, when I see some of the younger bands, the newer bands coming up, um, I feel like, yeah, maybe we are the elder statesmen, so to speak, but it always, I don't know. It it, uh, it still feels like, uh, like it's brand new. Like we're still the same guys from the south side of Chicago that were practicing in the storage facility, just trying to make our way and figure it out. Yeah, it still feels brand new to me, too. I mean, you know, Disturbed, as I said, you're, the, you know, the best drummer in current bass rock today. Um, and yeah, you, and, and you're that guy, though. You are that guy for a new generation of people that want to play the drums. So well, I appreciate that. Yeah. You absolutely are. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. Divisive, the new one from Disturbed is out on the 18th. And we can't wait to see you in the new year. Touring, touring, and more touring. I know you'll be in New Jersey. New Jersey loves Disturbed. The whole, this whole tri-state area, you always sell out. Wherever, if it's the Garden or PNC or wherever you are in our neck of the woods, everybody's always there. And we love it, too. Love that area. Everybody always comes out. And there's always a lot of passion uh, when we're out there doing the show, too. I love it. Oh, yeah. We're a bunch of crazy mother truckers out here. Thank <laughs> yeah, you, you my friend. Thank you so much for, for hanging with me today. I so appreciate it. Thank you very much. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full-service locksmith, and Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway. <laughs> 